Roger, are there some things that we can do that will hinder or stop the presence of God from being fully manifest in our everyday life? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I think there's a variety of different things. One of them would be lack of attention to God. So in Hebrews 11, 6, it says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So faith is that posture. It's that it's that surrender, that place of, of, of belief in him and, and paying attention to him. But then it goes on to say that we must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So that implies that, number one, we're aware and we pay, pay attention. So if we're not paying attention, if we're not in a prayerful mood or a mode, I should say, if we're sort of busy and going about our workaday world and most of us are really busy people. We can crowd God out. And so I think that is a grand hindrance to his presence. Uh, a second area, of course, would be a lack of holiness in our life. Uh, scripture is really clear about when we pursue God, we are pursuing his presence. So Hebrews 12, 14 says to seek peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see God. And so there's this pursuit of holiness that if, if we're not pursuing it like the hound after the hare, uh, that's a hindrance uh, because th these barriers get in the way of our relation. And being able to, you know, I, I call it, the, you know, that purity enhances perception. And so the extent to which we're growing in holiness, not rules and regulations, but living in the elegance of who God is in his character, that is a, a gateway to experiencing his presence. So I'd say, you know, a couple things, busyness, and lack of a pursuit of holiness get in the way of experiencing his presence. Well, Asbury University is probably my go-to place right now when they had the outpouring of the spirit back in February. Uh, it lasted almost three weeks and people lined up outside for six hours to get in there in, in the freezing cold in, in Wilmore, Kentucky. What was the draw? It wasn't good preaching. It wasn't good singing. It wasn't a guest speaker. It was actually the presence of God. And so the transformational impact of God's presence in a church setting is the, I believe, the absolute ingredient. We can have good preaching and good singing, and but a lot of church services are designed around sermons and singing, but they're, they, they don't necessarily manifest the presence of God, which becomes a compelling weight of his glory that brings healing and holiness. It brings the empowering presence of the gifts and uh, <clears throat> people can enjoy a, a good time, but walk away really unchanged, but it's the presence of God that really changes people. So I talk about presence centered churches and, you know, I know I'm a preacher. I love to preach, but I believe without prayer, the preaching doesn't carry the authority. It doesn't carry the unction that some of the writers from the past talk about the, the, the anointing of the spirit, the presence of God, which quickens the heart, but it only comes in the context of prayer and uh, a life of prayer, not just pray before the service or pastor prayer for five minutes in the middle. Jesus said, my house should be a house of prayer and not a house of preaching and not a house of worship. But I mean, those things occur, but until we become a people of prayer, we really do block, I believe, the presence of God activated in our churches and in our personal lives.